Hello guys, we're back on the uh, F23 today. Uh, my goal is going to be to get the crankshaft out and um, in order to do that we're going to have to take all this on the front off and then around to the back. This plate right here see, it comes across at the top so all that has to come off as well. One interesting thing about this engine it has these two pulleys on the front. Let's see here. Here and here. What they do is when they spin, they spin these pieces inside of the crankcase. Now, when I first looked at that, I thought that that might be some type of oil flicking device because um, that's part of your crank's job, is this, or maybe not this application, but a lot of engines are like that. As the crank spins, it grabs oil and it flicks it back up on top of itself. But what these actually are, they're internal dampeners. So as the engine's spinning, these are counterweighted. You can see it's kind of round on one side and flat on the other. So what that's doing is providing, it's, uh, taking away vibration from the, from the engine as it runs. I don't know how many Hondas use that application. I'm pretty sure the K-Series does not use the newer ones, the K-Series, do not use that style. So what we're going to do is uh, get you mounted up on the stand. I'm going to start taking the front of this off. It's a little more intricate than some I've done before, but I'm sure we're going to be able to pull this off. So let me get set up, and we'll be right back. All right, the first thing I'm going to go after is this um, tensioner here. I've already loosened it when I took the um, belt off initially, so we're going to take that off. This one 10 millimeter here. The kit I bought did come with these things new, but I'm still going to try to keep everything the way I found it when I took it off so that way when I go to put everything back on, it's not going to be too much head scratching. See that? Just went on there. Next, I'm going to go after this guy here, which is that is spinning that damper I just showed you. I think what it's doing, they couldn't have the gear here, so what they've done is there's actually a, it's like a gearbox here. It looks to me like it spins here, but it's actually spinning the uh, dampener in here, so there must be some type of gear behind there that's making that work. One's a nut, another one's a bolt. And just to keep up where everything goes, these two are bolts, but this one back here is a nut on a stud. And as always, I'm going to make sure that these two bolts are the same. Now, I'll have to remember. Bad boys are running. So looking at those two, they were the same. All right. And so that should allow this piece to come off now. Get the once over with the light and make sure I'm not going to pry on anything. That is still attached, that could be some bad news. Okay, looks like it's moving. This is a dead blood hammer. I wouldn't go hit, hitting this with metal. Yep, let's start the crack loose, crack apart. Again, I'm being very gentle. I don't want to mar any mating surfaces. And, yep, that's exactly what I thought it was. So, I guess in, this is just a design feature. There is a gasket in there. Um, the way this is set up, they, I guess, this, to do this gear like they did this gear would have gotten in the way of what they were doing, so they had to actually come up with this to um, run that other dampener. All right. So, just a minute, hold that gear on. Again, I've never worked with this before, so I'm going to try to be very careful about what I'm doing and keep up with where I'm at. Alright, I'm, 
I must have already loosened that somewhere along the line because that's just threading right out. I, and apparently these have timing marks on them, so I'm going to have to make sure I look that up. I'm guessing since they're weighted, they have to, when they spin, they have to spin together in a certain configuration to make sure that it's performing the way it's supposed to. And see, this is keyed and everything. So we'll have to make sure when it goes back together that I show you the right way to do that. So we're all on the same page and we have a well-balanced engine. Imagine if you got those two guys out of whack, this thing would try to jump all over the place. And there is a bearing seal in there. All right. Take this gear off of this one here as well. Let's figure out again when this goes back together how to time those together so they're working in unison. This might be a big old trick. I might, uh, I might just pull that out when I take that plate off. What I'm going to try to do with that one, um, since that's going to spin, I could probably put an impact and maybe get it. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get this plate off and have it all slide out together so that way I don't have to um, fight with this. All right, before I go any further, I'm going to go after this, what I'm going to assume at this point is the crank shaft positioning sensor. It's got two pieces together. I don't know if one does one job, one does the other. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way and get it stored with, stored with the oil part so nothing gets lost and it gets back to where it's supposed to be. And all of those bolts were the same size that came out. So there's that. Had one that's pointing in and one that's pointing to the side. So it was like that to give that information to the computer for the position of the crank. Alright, I need to go ahead and get the rest of this motor mount off before I proceed. that off somewhere in the past. Um, what I'm going to do is use one of my chrome ones. And as always, we'll store all this together. Make sure it all goes back where it's supposed to be. Alright, I'm going to go after the uh, water pump now. Here. happens when you run an engine with well water, you're going to start getting um, calcium deposits built up in your water system, so that's not a good idea. A couple here, 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 and here, and I think we should be about ready to go. Okay, most of those were the, right, the same size, and those two long ones came out the top, that should be pretty easy to remember. Right. Take this crank bowl back off and take the um, gear off of it. Okay, after giving us some thought and readjusting some things, I'm looking at where this breaks open and how, how far down this front plate goes. Uh, one thing I'm having a problem is this uh, front part of the crank, uh, this gear here, I can't get it off. I, I, it's got a piece of plastic back here that's part of the um, crank position sensor. So what I'm going to try and do with the dead blow is I'm just going to give it some light taps and see if I can get it to separate and see where it's going. I'm sure I've got all the bolts out, so let's start with that. Yes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Before I get too carried away. All right, yeah, that's coming. Um, that keyways can't get it to come off. So what I might have to do is use that little bit of pressure I was giving it just to go ahead and bump this all the way off the end before it's going to go anywhere. I'm going to keep a hand on everything. There it goes. All right. So this 
this is off now and this key right here on the crank you definitely want to keep up with that oh here we go there it is so of course that fits into the, the keyway fits into the crank and that makes sure all the pieces stay locked to their safe position on the crank and this here around the back of this is part of the um, is part of the crank position switch sensor as that thing spins it's counting on either side to see one two it's very quick but of course that magnetic it's called hall effect keeps up with that okay let me put this key in a safe place we're going to come back and get the rest of this off okay this should come out now it's bringing one of the dampers but not the other one with it so I'm going to go ahead and pull this bolt off this damper stand where it's at as I can see it's it's looking behind it now I can see it's got some additional bolts but this one looks like it's coming with this uh, gear back here whether I want to or not and there you go this part here is the oil pump for the engine so as you get a better look at that it's just a weighted spinner thing and you know, as I was, I told you in the first video I had a really bad oil leak at the front. I thought it was maybe it was the front main seal, but after looking at where the oil was coming out, I'm thinking now it was probably these O-rings for this dampener. So I certainly wouldn't want to tackle that while it was inside the car. So I'm still glad that I went ahead and pulled this out. Let's see if we get this other dampener out. And move on. All right, this is the other one here. I'm going after. see two bolts holding it. It's almost high enough, 10 millimeter. Okay. It bounced really well. Alright, let me get that one all the way out. This Nothing to see here other than it's got a, um, well, it's on the front of the actual case, I think, off it had a bearing seal around this part. All right, we've got to get the uh, back plate off, and we're ready to pick that crank up out of the, the uh, uh, bearings there. Okay, for this part here, I did take the engine off the uh, stand of the block. Um, it, when you have the engine stand on the back, it's, there's some of these that you can get to with a box wrench, like this, but some of them are recessed, so you'll have to have a ratchet to get to them. If uh, you're manly man enough like I am, I mean, that block is heavy, but it's not a small block Ford or something like that. So it's manageable with one person. Just be really careful. Uh, give it a good half while it's still in the stand to make sure that you're going to be able to handle it. If not, get you a friend. Save yourself some headache. All right, so um, this plate here is much like that other one on the front. It, you're just going to knock it off. This in the back is the rear main seal for the crank. So round rubber gasket for bearing seal goes around the whole thing. So um, again, I'm just going to take the dead blow, some gel pops, get that off. There we have it. And again, inside of this, that is your rear main seal. This is hard as a rock. You hear it breaking as I try to move it. That's supposed to be pliant rubber. So the crank is ready to pick out of there. So again, I you just pick it straight up. And those things that fell with the crush, I mean the uh, thrust washers, I'll show those to you here in just a second. Let me go get this put up. These are called thrush, thrust bearings. They go on either side, like right here. And what that does is as you're engaging the clutch and disengaging, it's just wanting to push the crank back and forth. You don't have that problem with automatic. But these prevent the crank from moving anymore than it has to. All right, I'm going to get this back up on the engine stand show where we're at. Okay, we're back up on the uh, engine stand now. Um, again, that's, 
I can handle it. Most people, most men can, adult men can handle that, but it is not like, use your legs, not your back. Uh, last thing I intend on taking a part out of this block is going to be these, um, the main crank journal bearing here. <clears throat> then what we're going to have to do, I'm going to still have some of the sensors on it. That's your knock sensor and your oil pressure sending sensor there. I think that's pretty much it. Yep, so what I've got left to do block-wise is going to get those two sensors off of it. Going to take it outside. It's going to get a good soak with uh, some degreaser pressure sprayed. And then the next step for the block is going to be honing out the cylinder walls. Again, I tell you, I'm going to stop and flip this over and we're going to take a look at the cylinder walls together, see where we're at. All right, we're looking back down the top of the block again. Um, in the cylinder walls, Just a quick look. You see that one there has got some places, but I'm going to see if I can catch it with my finger. Now, I'm not too concerned. I can about look at it. I don't see the light reflecting off the sides of it. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, just about what you expect to see. Like I said this is an old tired engine. It's probably got about 200,000 miles on it, maybe more. Depending on what the guy told me sold me the car. He also sold me a member from the first video where he had put the uh, gasket seal for the head gasket in it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a home. We're going to hone that out and get those ready to reseat the new uh, piston rings when, they, when I get them ready to go in. Okay, that's going to be our stopping point for today. Um, the next step, like we talked about, is we'll get the block cleaned up. We're going to work on the pistons, honing the engine, and uh, show you what goes into that. I've, uh, as of taping this, I've I had a couple of views for the series so far. It's, I really appreciate that. For those who want to keep up with it, uh, please leave me some comments. It's kind of like talking into a dead telephone. You know people are watching, but you're not hearing anything back. And that would certainly be appreciated. Even if it's, hey, you did this wrong, or hey, a better way to do that, I would certainly appreciate it. So at this point, if you like what you've been seeing, drop a like for the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you, guys. Representing gold at the bottom of that one.